Dawncraft is one of the most popular mod packs ever made. It's got questing, it's got bosses, it's got custom biomes and animals, and so much stuff that is added to Minecraft by over 250 mods. And you want to know how to play it with your friends. And in order to do that, you need to make a server. Now, a few things up front. Dawncraft is extraordinarily resource intensive. And for that reason, I would recommend at least 32 gigabytes of RAM on your computer in order to run Dawncraft and run a Dawncraft server at the same time. It's extremely resource taxing. I cannot stress that enough. On top of that, you're going to need a decent newer CPU. It doesn't have to be top of the line per se, but it needs to have enough headroom to be able to run Dawncraft on a server and run Dawncraft, the mod pack itself, locally on your computer. Again, very resource taxing to do both of these. Now, what if you don't want to have to worry about that? You just want to be able to play Dawncraft, and sure you can run it on your computer, but you're worried about being able to also run a server, and maybe you just want to make setting up a server easy. This video is very, very long. Setting up a Dawncraft server will probably take about double the time that this video runs because we're going to be able to cut out a lot of the waiting you have to do when setting up your server. So keep all of that in mind. What if you just want to do things simply? Well, that's where our company Simple Game Hosting comes in. You can check out Simple Game Hosting at the first link in the description down below the breakdown.xyz slash simple to start your very own Minecraft server quickly and easily running Dawncraft. So go there. Once you're here, go ahead and click get started. Select the package you want. We recommend an eight gigabyte server for Dawncraft. And then once you've purchased, you will get this, an account created email. Click set up your account and basically go through the account creation process. It's super easy. Just enter in your password basically. And then it'll be taken to where you can select and access your server. From here, all you need to do is select mod packs at the top. Then as you can see, Dawncraft is right here, but you may need to search for it in the future if it's no longer one of those popular packs. But as you can see, we have this version drop down box and we want to select the most recent version down here at the bottom. As you can see, it is released currently on August 16th of 2023. That will update in the future. So whatever the newest one is, usually it's the one at the bottom. Click on install and then click yes. And now Dawncraft is installing on your server. Once this is finished, all you've got to do is click on console and then click start. Your server may already be started, but you want to make sure that you start your server. The first time this starts up, it's going to take a few minutes. After that, it'll start up in about 60 seconds or so. Modded Minecraft takes forever for everything, unfortunately. From there, you want to copy the IP up here in the top right by just clicking on it. And then you want to open up Dawncraft locally. So yes, you will need to install Dawncraft using CurseForge. We have a complete guide on how to do this in the description down below. And everyone who joins your server will have to do this as well. It's a limitation to modded Minecraft, unfortunately. If there was anything we could do about it, you wouldn't have to download Dawncraft on CurseForge, but unfortunately you do. Once you've got it open though, we can join your server just like any other Minecraft server. Click on multiplayer, click add server, and then you want to name the server here. We're going to name it Simple Game Hosting, but you can name it anything that you want, and then paste in the server address. Click done, and boom, there it is. Double click on it, and you will join right on in to your Dawncraft server. This video, like I said, is super, super long. It will show you everything of starting a Dawncraft server on your own computer and allowing your friends to join it. But keep in mind that it's going to take a while. It's going to have a lot of different issues along the way that you may need to fix. We've got everything set up and ready to go at Simple Game Hosting right out of the gate. You don't have to really think about anything except what mod pack you want to install. And if you do have any issues, we have live chat support that you can reach out to to get help and assistance with anything to do with your Minecraft server. So again, you can check out Simple Game Hosting to start your server the simple way at the first link in the description down below with the breakdown.xyz slash simple to start your Dawncraft server. But let's go ahead and get it set up on your own computer. So in order to do that, I'm going to go ahead and close out of Dawncraft and go here. This is the second link in the description down below. And this is the official Dawncraft mod pack page. But what we can get here is the server files. So to do that, once you're here, go ahead and click on files. And then you want to find the most recent version. For me, this is it right now. But obviously, you can just check the date here. By default, the most recent version will be at the top. Click on it and then scroll down. And at the very bottom down here, you'll find the Dawncraft server pack. This is what we want to download. So go ahead and click the three dots here and click download file and after a few seconds Dawncraft will begin downloading it's a semi large download so it might take a few seconds as you can see it is now downloading for us up here you also may need to keep or save it depending on your browser but it's 100% safe to do that so as you can see it has now finished downloading here and we need to download one more thing and that is forge forge is basically the mod loader that Dawncraft uses and we need to install the forge server files in order to be able to run a Dawncraft server we have a link in the description down below and that will take you here this is a guide on getting forge but you really don't need this for this video. Just click on the Download Forge button to be taken to Forge's official download page. Once you're here, on the left-hand side, click on 118, and then click on 1.18.2. This is the version that Dawncraft uses, so this is the version we want to download. 
From here, we want to go ahead and come under Download Latest and click on the Installer button. Then Forge will begin downloading. You may be taken off to a page on Ad Focus. If that happens, just wait a few seconds and click a red skip button that appears in the top right. So now we have both Forge and Doncraft downloaded. Let's go ahead and minimize our browser. Now what we want to do is move these to our desktop. So they're going to be in your downloads folder, most likely by default. That's what they'll be for me. Right here they are. And we want to get them on your desktop. Now first things first, we want to actually work with this Forge file here. So in order to do that, you want to right click on it, click on open with, click Java and click OK. But Nick, I don't have Java. Well, if you don't have Java, what you want to do is go to the description down below and download this, Java 17. You need it for Minecraft mods and you need it for Minecraft servers, so you definitely need it to run a modded Minecraft server like Doncraft. So here is a complete guide on getting that Java set up for Minecraft. You may also need to run the jar fix. This is going to take all the jar files from your computer and link them back to Java, make them work together. But first, you want to download Java, then run the jar fix. Nevertheless, at this point, we can go ahead and minimize our browser, and we want to go ahead and actually right-click on our desktop, create a new folder, and title this folder Doncraft Server. You can title it whatever you want. That's just an easy way to remember what it is. And now, let's open up Forge. So right-click on Forge, click on Open With, click Java, and click OK. This is going to open up the mod system installer for Forge. Click on Install Server here. Now, you'll get this big red box perfectly normal. Click on the three dots on the right-hand side, and then click on Desktop on the left. Here you'll have the folder you created, in our case, Doncraft Server. Make sure that's selected, it should be blue, it should say it down here, and then click Open. If the red box goes away, you selected the right folder, the one you just created, and then go ahead and click OK. Now the Forge server files are going to install back here in your Doncraft server folder that you created. So as you can see, it's now downloading, it's installing, it's doing everything that you need in order to get Doncraft working with Forge. So just sit back and let this install. Once it's finished, go ahead and click OK and it will close out of the Forge installer. You can actually delete that file you downloaded from your desktop. Now, before we even move into the next step, we want to go ahead and extract this Doncraft server pack file we downloaded. To do that, right click on it, click Extract All, and then go ahead and click Extract. It's now going to go through and extract all of these files for our Doncraft server. So this is another waiting game. Sit back, let it extract, and then once it's finished, you will have a new folder. It might open up automatically like this, but if it doesn't, it's going to be on your desktop, and it's going to be Doncraft server pack. It's going to be open like a normal folder, not the zipped style here. We can go ahead and delete the zipped folder. We want this one. What do we do? Well, we open it up and we select everything in here. Then you want to drag and drop it into that Doncraft server folder that you had already installed. You want to go ahead and replace the files in the destination. And then now if we open up our Doncraft server here, not our Doncraft server pack, but our Doncraft server, right? Right here it is, Doncraft server. We will have config, default config, global packs, libraries, mods, scripts, readme, run.bat, run.sh, and Java args. You should have pretty much all this, right? This should all be in here. And what we need to do now is go ahead and double click on this run.bat file. That's going to go ahead and attempt to start your server. It's going to fail though. That's normal because we need to agree to the Minecraft EULA. So as you can see, press any key to continue. We're going to go ahead and do that. But we have this new EULA.txt file. Open that up with Notepad, and assuming you agree to the Minecraft EULA, which of course we do, we want to change EULA equals false to EULA equals true, T-R-U-E, exactly like that, and then click File, Save. Now we want to go ahead and close out a Notepad and double click on that run.bat file again. Now at this point, your server's going to start with Dawncraft. But keep in mind, you're the only person that can join it. I'll show you how to join it, how to test it, but at this point, your friends cannot join this server. In order to do that, we're going to need to port forward. Don't worry, it's all going to be covered in this video, but it is worth noting. Like everything, though, with modern Minecraft, we've just got to sit back and wait for this server to finish up starting. So I will show you what it looks like and kind of what to look out for to know when it's finished, then we'll join it, then we'll allow our friends to join it. So let's go ahead, do a jump cut. All right, so once you see basically this, dedicated server took amount of seconds to load, that means the server is now started. At this point, what you want to do to be able to join the server is, of course, open up Minecraft with Doncraft. So in order to do that, we come here, we play Doncraft using CurseForge. By the way, if you did want to install Doncraft, you would just search it in the top of the CurseForge app here and then click on it and click on install instead of play. I have play because I've already got it installed. Once Doncraft starts to open, it will open up the Minecraft launcher here, and then obviously just click play in the launcher to launch up Doncraft. Just wanted to give a little guide there in case you didn't know how to do that, but I'm guessing if you're starting a server, you've probably already downloaded Doncraft locally. 
using Curse Wars. But just in case you haven't, that's how you can do that. But nevertheless, I'm gonna go ahead and let this open, and then we can join the server. To do that, you wanna click on multiplayer, and then you can go ahead and add the server if you want, and you can name it anything. We're gonna do our local Dongcraft. And then the server address is localhost. Just localhost, all one word, and click done. Now as you can see, we have our local Dawncraft server here. Double click on it and you'll see us join on in on the left hand side. And there you go, you can join this server. Now again, you're the only person that can join this server. Your friends cannot join this server. Um, in order for them to join the server, you're gonna need to port forward. How can you port forward? Well, I'm gonna show you how to do all of that. So let's go ahead and jump into it. First things first, we wanna go ahead and close out of Dawncraft. We also wanna stop the server to properly stop your server. Go over here to the right hand side and top stop. You could type it here or you could type it down here. There's no slashes or anything, just stop and hit enter. That's then gonna close out the server right like so. We wanna make sure we do that every time because that properly shuts the server down. From there, we want to go ahead and open up Command Prompt. To do that, go ahead and click on the Start menu and then type in CMD. You'll have Command Prompt here, open it up, and then in Command Prompt, type IPCONFIG, IPConfig, exactly like that, and hit Enter. You're then going to get a bunch of numbers here. Specifically, we want two. I'm going to go ahead and make note of them in Notepad, but you could use a sticky note or anything like that. It doesn't really matter. But the two numbers we want is our IPv4 address and our default gateway. As you can see, here's our IPv4, so we'll go ahead and make a note of that, IPv4, and that's going to be 192.168.1.25. Our default gateway is going to be below that, and you may have a different looking default gateway than me, and if that's the case, that's okay. As you can see, mine is just numbers. You may have one that's numbers and letters. If that's the case, there'll be another one right below that that's just numbers, right? It won't have default gateway next to it. It'll be blank next to it, but it'll be under default gateway, and it will be the same format as this, just numbers. Go ahead and make note of that, which for me, that's 192.1. 68.1.1. Yours may be different or the same, just depends. Generally, your IPv4 address here is going to be different, which is why we get that. Sometimes the default gateway is the same. So yeah, nevertheless, with notes of both of these taken down, we wanna go ahead and open up our browser. In our browser, we wanna take that default gateway here and we wanna paste it up here at the top where we would normally type in simplegamehosting.com, thebreakdown.xyz, youtube.com, up here at the top, paste that in and hit enter. Then some sort of a login box is going to appear here. Now, yours may be completely different from mine and that's perfectly normal, but no matter what, you're gonna have some sort of a login box here and no matter what, we have a guide in the description on how to find your router's password. This goes over all the basically methods that you should use. Start with method one, work all the way down through method five, which unfortunately is contacting your ISP. Generally though, people find it by method four, which is resetting your router and trying the default info, which you find in method three, right? So it kind of all links together. Start with method one, work your way down to method four there, and you'll be good to log in. I'm gonna go ahead and log into my router. And then once I've done that, we can go ahead and port forward. Now, every router is going to be different, but I'm gonna be giving you the common terms and things to think about and look for whenever you are port forwarding your router. Now, in the description down below, we do have a guide on port forwarding on the most popular routers. It's worth checking out, and even if your router's not listed, it's worth listening to it and kind of going through and picking up the different terms because, well, a lot of routers have very similar naming schemes and things like that, so it is worth checking out. But with that being said, I'm also going to give you a bunch of terms here. Now, for you, port forwarding may be in advanced, it may be in advanced, and then advanced again, it may be in apps and gaming, it may be in port forwarding, it may be in port forwarding slash port triggering, it may be in NAT forwarding, NAT forwarding, it may be in NAT gaming, NAT gaming, it could be in the security tab, the firewall tab, or again, in advanced admin or admin administration tab. For me, it is in advanced, and then it is in advanced again, and then it is in port forwarding slash port triggering. Now, once you've found this here, you might have uh, two options. You could be like me and be able to click add a service, add a new port forward. You might have some sort of a plus button, or you may just have a uh, list of a bunch of boxes all the way down the screen. Either way, you want to go ahead and either enter in the first box or click add a port forward. Once you've clicked add here, what we want to do is go ahead and enter in for the service name or ID. What this port forward is for, it can be really anything. You just want to make sure that you can identify it. We're going to name it Dawncraft Server. For the protocol, you want to enter in TCP slash UDP, UDP slash TCP, or both. No matter what, you want to make sure that both of these are selected here. For anything involving the word port, external port, internal port, first port, second port, outside port, inside port, anything to do with the word port, you want to go ahead and enter in 25565. 
for the internal ports. Hey, that word ports, there it is. I said anything with the word port is 25565. Now, last but not least, you need an internal IP address. Well, this is the local IPv4 address we found earlier right here. So as you can see, 192.168.1.25. You may not be able to select and enter in an individual IP address, and if that's the case, you'll have a big drop-down list of different devices. You want to select the device you're starting your server on. I also have that, so as you can see, right here it is. You can see the IP address matches there, so we can select it this way too. Doesn't matter which one you do, you just wanna make sure you select the computer you're starting the server on. You may need an external IP in some rare cases, and guess what, even if you don't need it, you need it to allow your friends to join your server because that's the IP they will use. Now, for me, I don't need it. I can go ahead and click apply, save, all of that stuff. If you did need an external IP, we have a link in the description down below. When you click that link, it will take you here. This is our page that basically just takes your IP address and gives it back to you. Now, for me, you can only see 4.3 here. The reason for that is this server is only meant for your friends, your family, people you can trust. If you want to give the IP address out to people you don't trust, you're going to need to use somewhere like Simple Game Hosting because with this IP address, people can figure out where you lived under your latitude and longitude coordinates, in addition to being able to DDoS you, basically hitting your internet off offline, making it slow, all of that stuff. So you want to make sure that this is only for your friends, your family, people you trust. Click to copy here. And then if you did need this in your port forward, you can go back here. Otherwise, we can minimize our browser and we can start our server. So let's go ahead and do that by double clicking here and double clicking the run.bat file. That's how you'll start your server. We also want to go ahead and open up CurseForge and open up Dawncraft. So I'm going to go ahead and get all of this going, get Dawncraft craft open get the server started and then we can join now we're going to join how your friends will join your server they'll use this public ip we just had with dawncraft they need to install dawncraft open it like this and then they'll use the public ip we just got to join now in some cases you won't be able to join via your public ip address that's perfectly fine All only people that need to join via your public ip are your friends you can always use that local host ip now let's go ahead and add another server we're going to call this our public IP address and then we're going to paste in the public IP here now again all you can see is 43 that's it because you don't want to make this public especially in a YouTube video like this so go ahead and click done here and now we have this public IP address now I know that they're going to let me in right that my ISP is perfectly okay with me connecting back to myself via my public IP if yours isn't and you can join via localhost that's okay as long as your friends can join via the public IP as you can see here we are in the server Dawncraft is so hostile, where you just join in and instantly start dying. Gotta love it. But nevertheless, what if your friends can't join via your public IP? Well, in that case, we do have an in-depth guide on how to allow Java through your firewall for Minecraft servers. This goes over everything that you need to know to get, basically, your friends joining. Because most likely, the reason they can't join is either an issue with your port forward, it's worth double-checking that, or this, your Windows Defender firewall is blocking the connection. So... If that's the case, this covers everything here. It could also be an antivirus, and also if you do have a VPN on, that won't work. You need to turn off your VPN, and you need to get your public IP address again in order to join the server. But nevertheless, we also have a how to fix a broken Minecraft server guide. This does work with modded servers and goes over everything you need to know to get your server up and running. Now, with that being said, you have a Dawncraft server started, and unfortunately, um, hostile spawn, like I said. But nonetheless, you can play with your friends. You're good to go. If you want to set up a Dawncraft server the easy way, you already know how. The breakdown.xyz slash simple. First link in the description down below. That link will take you directly to Simple Game Hosting and let you get your Dawncraft server started the simple way. But anyway, you can now start one on your own computer if you'd rather go that way as well. Hope you enjoyed. Give it a thumbs up. We'll see you in the next one. Peace.